Okay guys, um, I haven't made a video for a while, and here's another one about Z-Box. Um, so basically, since the last video, there have been a couple updates, and I've also uh, changed a couple of my configurations inside the car to better suit the uh, the working conditions of the Z-Box. So on here, I have the, um, the newest firmware, 3.0.4 at the time I'm making this video. You can get them now. You can actually download them from the original manufacturer's website, so you don't have to go hunting for them all over the internet. I'll put a link in the description just in case. So uh, here, I'll just put that into the USB slot. Pardon the card, it's a little messy. And we'll go into the file browser here. Okay, so on the USB, if you download the firmware, you'll see uh, files inside the zip file. So I just put them on the root of the drive. So here I have files firmware-3.0.4.bin and update-3.0.4.bin. From what I can tell, they're identical files, bit for bit, but I think something to do with the firmware update procedure, it requires for both of them to be there. At the very least, they have both files in there for the, um, in, in the entire package, right? So, and also the latest version of the actual APK is 3.0.2. So, I've already installed 3.02, and then we have 3.0.4.bin. So, now we're going to eject the, uh, the USB drive. And as far as I understand, the actual update procedure works as such. So, here's your Z-Box. You insert the USB drive into, whoops, into the Z-Box like that, make sure it's in there nice and snug. Um, depending on when you got it or where you got it, the uh, the actual USB port can be a little bit loose, so what I do is I just press it with my fingers to bend the metal on the inside so it presses the contacts to the, to the female end of the port. I don't know, it's kind of hard to focus here. Anyway, you get the idea. So just uh, bend that inside and then it sits inside the USB port a little bit better. Uh, next is the USB hub. So I went and purchased a powered USB hub. Uh, I don't know, I went on AliExpress and just found one, just any old one, which was not too expensive. Uh, this one happens to have seven ports and also be USB 3.0, but obviously that's not necessary. Here I have uh, a USB DVR, so for my uh, dash cam, and my um, USB modem slash uh, Wi-Fi stick. Anyhow, uh, the main thing is obviously cars are 12 volt, all the batteries and all the accessory wires, whatever, they're 12 volts. So I just wired up a 12 volt uh, power supply to the active power here, um, just to the accessory wires you can, you know, depending on your car, whatever the uh, head unit was wired up to, just make sure it only turns on when you turn on accessory power or turn on the car. Now, uh, because this thing tr uh, needs a lot of amps, more than the standard 0.5 amps, so each one of these ports should be good for 2 amps, I think. Anyhow, and this was enough to power it. So now we're going to, with the firmware on the root of this USB drive plugged into the back, we're going to plug it in to our USB hub. Let's hope I can get it right. Nope, of course I didn't. And there we go. And now we wait. So it turns on here, it's reading from the drive. And this might actually take a while. So it's normal that it'll read from the, from the drive. You won't see anything come up, so if you have your Android head unit on, you won't automatically see ZBox opening up for quite some time because firmware updates, they do take a few minutes for this device. So the main thing is, don't touch it, don't unplug it, don't turn your car off, don't turn your computer off, whatever you do, just let it do its thing and make sure that it has constant power. Otherwise, you can mess up your firmware update and potentially brick your device. I have almost bricked it before, doing something stupid like unplugging it because I thought it was frozen or something, uh, and mine didn't happen to be bricked fully, so it wasn't a huge issue. But your mileage may vary, so uh, yeah, don't unplug it. Just let it go and eventually your device so your head unit should recognize it and the Z-Box app will recognize it. So I'm gonna have to do a jump cut here so you guys don't have to stare at this uh, pulsating USB drive forever. Okay, so it's been maybe a minute or so, and now we can see that it connects, and 
if you have everything the way I had it set up on the drive, as soon as it connects and ZBox recognizes it, you will get this pop up on your screen. So this is the second part of the upgrade procedure. ZBox is upgrading. Please do not pull out. Lots of dirty jokes you can make from that, but you get the idea. Same thing applies. Don't cut power. Don't turn your car off. Don't pull out. You know, in some parts of your life you should probably pull out, just in case, but, you know, in this case, don't. Okay, so it's successful, please reinsert. So just pull out the entire Z-Box dongle, take off your USB drive, which has all the firmware stuff on it, so it doesn't try to update again. There you go, now it's just the Z-Box, USB port, plugged it in, and with any luck, it should work on the first try because, well, now I give it enough power, or as much power as it needs. There you go, lights up, we have USB connection, and on the screen we should see Z-Box connecting. And Z-Box connected. Brilliant. Okay, so now if we look on the screen, we can go about. And as you could see, APK version 3.0.2 and Z-Box version 3.0.4. I don't know what the changes are. I can't read Chinese. You guys can look in the zip package yourself, see if you can see any information that's useful. But I assume stability has been embedded or whatever I, I don't know I guess it's supposed to be better every single release I haven't really seen a huge difference but that's not the point okay so on to the actual function so here we go uh, original Apple iPhone lightning cable and we got an iPhone 6 plus and let's see so we'll plug in the iPhone cable into the Z box and the iPhone gets plugged in like so. Okay, so here, first time, we need to open, pass code, and there we go. And then, wonderful, somebody's Instagram. <clears throat> All right, and then you can leave the phone locked and concentrate on driving. So here we go, this is all in Russian, because, well, my girlfriend's phone is all in Russian, but anyhow, these are the apps that are available, everything works, um, here's maps. Depending on your phone, because this is all running off your phone, the newer the phone you have, so if you have a 7 Plus, or what you have, um, what else we got? If, if by the time of this video, you know, you have an iPhone 8, or an iPhone 10, or whatever, they'll obviously react faster to your presses. Uh, so, uh, you can watch tons of videos on the way that CarPlay works. Uh, I won't explain it to you because you know how it works, or this isn't the point of the video. Either way, the technology works. Uh, in the newest versions, I've noticed that this turns into a new button. They chose yellow for this, so obviously they won't have a, uh, a brand-specific model, so they won't have a button. If you have a Hyundai, I have a Hyundai here, they won't have a Hyundai button because the, the Android unit has no idea what car it's in. Uh, you can't customize it as far as I know, but, well, there you go. But that will just take you to your home screen. It will run in the background as, uh, well, as I can demonstrate now. So let's see, we have some music. Again, the newer the phone, the faster this goes. Uh, oh dear, okay. Do we have any music? Top hits, yeah, why not? Uh, sure, why not? So, with any luck, there we go, the music's playing, you can go home here, you can press on your car button, music is still playing, independent of whatever you're doing here, um, yeah, and everything still works. The same thing applies to anything that you're doing, so if you're doing navigation, uh, it will still, you know, keep shouting at you and stuff and telling you where to go, which is great. So if you press home, it's the same effect, yeah? It runs in the background, it, as you'd expect, which is great. Um, what else? What other specific things are here? Uh, at the time of recording, so if you have Spotify, um, and you have it installed on your head unit, it still has that problem where both of them get affected. So to get around that problem, hang on, let me just pause this. To get around that problem, what I did was I 
did a tasker profile which would automatically disable the Spotify APK on the head unit as soon as you open ZBox so that they don't conflict with each other and that you can properly use your steering wheel keys. For instance, well, right now on Apple Music it works fine because I have my play pause. And that just works fine. So yeah, as long as my wonderful Tasker profile, here you can see Tasker ZBox app services disables Spotify by default, and then it doesn't conflict with this. So I don't know if that's even able to be fixed at this point. What's next? Uh, the other thing that was kind of annoying for me, but is really easy to fix is uh, using your telephone. So by default, you will probably have your telephone paired to your head unit. Great. Uh, and if you're not using CarPlay, it just uses the Bluetooth connection and you can easily take phone calls and not take your eyes off the road. Great. But uh, if you have CarPlay plugged in and you want to use the telephone function, it will not use the default uh, USB connection. So it won't use the wonderful high quality audio that you can have through the USB connection in the CarPlay. It will default to using Bluetooth. So you can leave it like that, and it sounds more or less fine, but the other option you can have is go on your phone and just turn off Bluetooth when you're using CarPlay, and then nothing will conflict, and you'll take phone calls only on you know, CarPlay, and the, the audio quality will be better. Uh, that said, I don't know how well it works in the background, so you might just want to you know, sacrifice audio quality a little bit and just use the Bluetooth connection independent of CarPlay. That's pretty much it. Uh, we can also take a look at... Just disconnect here. Uh, we can take a look at some of the settings. There are new settings in the versions since 2.0. So driver position, left, right, that's uh, depending on which side of the road you drive on, which side of the car your steering wheel is on, and that will just basically give all the status information, the home button and the uh, app switcher, move it to the other side of the screen. Uh, night mode, once again, I haven't really seen a difference from this. Uh, we could try again, we had daytime mode, we had daytime maps, as you saw. Flick it to night mode, go back, plug the phone in again, let's see what happens. I wonder if we'll have nighttime maps. Let's see here. Let's open up maps. And maps. So maps still show daytime maps. Uh, I don't know. So that setting doesn't really seem to do anything. Uh, if I cover up the ambient light sensor uh, with my hand, it also doesn't seem to do anything, so your mileage may vary, but for me, it doesn't really affect anything. Uh, back into the other settings. Let's see, we also have, yeah, so night mode and echo cancellation. It's stuck in the off position. If I hit on, wonderful, then I go back, this happens. Uh, I assume it's something to do with the echo cancellation. If I press this, I don't speak Chinese, I can't read this. You go back to the settings, it's as if I canceled it because it's off again. So, process of elimination, right? I should press this instead of this, so let's press that. In case that was canceled and this is okay, go back to settings, echo cancellation, still off. So, I don't know if they just haven't enabled it, if it's in development, I don't know, but for now, it doesn't seem to do anything. So that's the newest version of ZBox. That's how you update it. That's how you use it. Main thing, get a nice, powerful, active USB hub and you pretty much won't ever have any troubles with it. As you've seen, it just connects right away every single time. Plug it in, phone starts charging, phone's detected, and you can enjoy CarPlay on your Android head unit. All right, well, thanks for watching and uh, take care, guys. Bye-bye.